Guys here are some of tricks or logics which differentiate between an average gamer and elite player in FC24. So let's jump into the video. Are you tired of matching up against overpowered squads? Visit u 7 bycom for cheap and safe FC coins on the market. Remember to use the discount code DRFC for 6% off. Check the link in the description. When attacking our main focus or target is to reach the opponent's box and score, either we reach the opponent's box slow or fast, it doesn't matter. So in order to reach the opponent's box you need to take an action that leads you forward, you need to move forward, let's see this logic to understand what it means to gain ground. So to get forward you need to consider two factors, is there resistance from the opponent, or no resistance. Beginning on when there is no resistance, if you realize in front of your player is free, there's no opponent's defender to apply pressure which is the resistance, then you're free to move forward and drive into that space, so here you are gaining ground from that action. If you see that open space in front, no resistance. You can sprint as long as you want, or up to the point when the opponent makes a resistance. Getting forward doesn't mean that you only just sprint forward into that space, no. Also if you see that open pass in front, no resistance, meaning no opponent's player blocking it, then take that pass, here you're getting forward, still meaning that you're gaining ground. This implies to every pass you take or dribble, if you face no resistance from the opponent, then gain ground, take that pass or dribble and move forward to attack. What about when you face resistance, this is so simple to understand, the opponent is blocking your way forward, still you have to read the pitch and understand your options. I know some player here tend to try and beat that resistance, but the basic and safe way is to either pass backwards and open more options, or you can pass sideways, or even dribble and change direction to beat that press. To understand this take a look at these examples. I'm controlling my fullback in this position, the opponent moves his defender in front and makes a resistance, so I pass backwards to my center back, I control the ball and see this pass in front is open, so I take it to gain ground, I control the ball safe towards my options, this pass is open, and so I take it, and moving forward freely without much resistance. I control the ball forward to see whether I face any resistance, this pass is open and as usual I have to take it. In this attack I managed to build up freely playing basic simple football just using this logic and ending up scoring. The second example, I pass to my winger and turn forward, I face resistance and so I change direction and pass forward to my free player, as I control the ball, the opponent puts some resistance and I decide to dribble safe and change direction, I see this open pass forward to my striker, no resistance, and so I take that pass, the ball receiver is tightly marked, so I take the safe first touch away from the opponent's defender. I see my winger running in behind, no resistance, and so I get this ball forward, I take that pass and gain ground. You can play simple basic football and break the opponent's defense just by passing and dribbling if you master this logic. Passing the ball is the easiest and open way to gain ground, meaning to move forward quickly than dribbling, but sometimes we face difficult opponents who can anticipate and cut passing lanes, everyone want to move forward, and passing forward is the basic way. But if you rush these forward passes against good opponents you will lose possession many times, because cutting forward passes is the most obvious thing to do when defending. But you can play like an elite player if you do this, passing sideways or backwards to open up that forward pass you wanted at first. So if you see that forward pass to your player, take a look at the opponent's defender and observe his positioning and movements. If that defender is in a position to block that passing lane, here you play smart by passing the ball sideways will open up that passing angle for you to take that pass. And that's why we always encourage you to view these triangle passing patterns, seeing three players at that given time, this trick will take your game to the next level. Let's have these simple examples. Here I want to move forward and so I realize the passing lane to my striker is open, but I was expecting the opponent to watch it using his defender in a position to intercept this pass. So I first pass the ball sideways, and this opens up that passing lane with a big advantage to attack, so I attack directly and score this goal. Another example, here I win the ball and I see this pass to my striker, but I realize that if I pass the ball to this player, I will face immediate pressure from the opponent because of this defender near my player so I pass sideways to see what happens. Still the pass is not open because the opponent is tightly marking my striker, but this player sideways is free, so I pass to him and at the moment the pass to my striker is open, I take that pass, I attack the free space and I manage to break through and behind and counter-attack the opponent, ending up scoring this goal. 
Passing backwards or sideways will magically open up that forward pass you need to move forward and gain ground. One of the effective logics is the passing and dribbling unpredictability, this trick or logic is used most of the times when trying to be unpredictable, how? That moment when you have an open pass and the opponent really expects you to pass the ball, but you do the opposite, instead you dribble and surprise the opponent. This especially works against opponent who anticipate a lot, players who tend to always read your next move, you need to also act smart and fool your opponent. It's not all about dribbling, you need to pass, for example when the opponent reads that pass, here you dribble, the opponent will look like a fool in panic because he anticipated wrongly, so he will rush and try to press this ball holder, and that's when you pass. Now you're fooling him twice, the pass and the dribbling. I personally like to use this trick just to unlock the opponent's defense by ruining his anticipation ego, but remember when the pass is open, take it and use that advantage, don't always dodge that pass or space, you only do it when you have that feeling that your opponent is blocking that pass, or he will do it. So you just need a perfect balance of dribbling and passing to improve your unpredictability skills, and it also depends on the opponent's skill level. Playing on elite level you need to understand this important logic, the game direction concept, it's by nature in strategy to follow the game direction. When you attack, and you see the open space or pass, you move to that direction and follow the game direction, it's by default or nature to move towards that direction either by passing the ball or dribbling. So you move the ball to that direction and attack the other side of the pitch, or through the middle. But this concept needs you to fake or change the game direction, as you attack while following the game direction. But if you want to break good opponents you have to sometimes fake or change the direction and move back to previous direction, this ruins the opponent's anticipation coordination and rhythm, hence panicking and making mistakes. Changing game direction you can do it by using that first touch, you control the ball to the opposite direction and attack the space. You can also do it by dribbling, you need to dribble very fast and change the direction, so make sure you improve your dribbling skills and also get some good players with high dribbling stats. You can also change the game direction just by passing, that's why you need to master the art of passing in triangle format, and also implement that tic-tac in your gameplay. Take a look at these simple examples, here I pass back to my fullback and pass to my winger son, so here the game direction is shifting to this direction, and I expect opponent to defend following that natural logic, so I surprise him by changing the game direction, as you see he misread my moves and he panicked, I move down the byline, get this cutback and I score. Another example I move down the wing and pass to my striker, so here the game direction is moving to this direction, as I control the ball. I expect my opponent to defend following the game direction, so I dribble and change the direction, fooling my opponent and score. I'm not saying that following game direction is bad, no, just sometimes you have to be unpredictable especially against tough opponents. One of the effective and important trick you notice elite players do is that directness when creating chances, it's risk versus reward. In last game series we had this concept of risk versus reward, so check the video link in the description. When you're building up, it's fine to take everything safe and keep possession of the ball, but when you reach the opponent's box, here you have to be more direct if you want to create a chance. Either by using that direct first touch towards the opponent's goal, or taking on that defender with a skill move or dribbling tricks, taking that risky pass into your player in tight spaces. This directness forces your opponent to defend well or he will be punished, how? When you try that skill move to beat that defender, the opponent has to defend that skill move very disciplined, so if he fails then you get through and score that goal. This will separate you from average players, meaning to defend you at least it's difficult for average players to do it easily. So what are situations when you have to be more direct? Number 1. When you win the ball in the opponent's half or near the opponent's goal, here the opponent's defender are out of positions, and so you have big open spaces and dangerous passes. Here you need to be more direct and attack the opponent's goal with speed. For example here, I win the ball in the opponent's half and I decide to turn and attack directly, I pass to my players and make one-touch passes just to increase that speed, I take a direct first touch facing the opponent's goal and score. Another situation to attack directly is when you switch sides, have you noticed that when you switch side you will always have some open spaces, we looked at this concept of switching sides many times on the channel.
So when you switch side, attack with speed and directness because here the opponent's defenders are not in positions to defend this situation. Taking those forward direct passes to your strikers and break the opponent. This works well because defenders load on the ball side, leaving some big spaces on the opposite side, you switch side and move to that side with space, so here the opponent's defenders will automatically try to also move to that direction. Here if you play to slow and safely then you're giving time for those defenders to reposition. And that's why you have to attack quickly with directness and use that advantage of open spaces and break the opponent. The last situation or scenario is counterattacks. We attack directly because of open spaces in passing lanes, using that advantage of outnumbered defenders. And so counterattacks you have to attack very direct to break that defense. That's why we always take direct long passes like driven passes and through passes. For example here, I win the ball in my half immediately I go for a counterattack. I see this through pass opportunity to my running player and I take it. The opponent manages to block my way towards his goal, so I decide to turn away, I pass back to my winger. Now here you think the counterattack is over, no, because the opponent's back four is well shaped, but the midfielders haven't positioned back and still I have big open spaces, I see my striker, but my opponent is blocking it, so I use this logic of side passing and open up that pass, I take this direct long pass to my striker, take a direct first touch inside the box, without wasting time I pass to my winger inside the box, take a direct first touch and score. Playing directly it's not by rule that you need to follow the outline situations, you can still do it in normal situations and break the opponent if he defends poorly. Using these tricks will take you some time to get comfortable using them, just keep on practicing. So that's it guys for today, thanks for watching.